Sepp Blatter has stepped down from the top spot at FIFA. Well, one thing we've been told over and over again about FIFA is that Sepp Blatter runs it like a dictatorship. He controls all the shots. Everything is on his timetable and he runs it with an iron fist. Well, apparently that's not true because dictators don't have to step down just because they have become international pariahs. And it turns out that Sepp is <laughs> living in a slightly more democratic, transparent world than he had hoped for. After saying he was absolutely going to serve a whole other term last week, he unexpectedly stepped down earlier this week. Now, whether he perceives that he is about to be indicted and go to jail, I don't know. Or is it simply because so many of his board members and sponsors have called yelling and screaming saying, the organization is being destroyed, we need a clean slate. I don't know. No one knows at this point other than Sepp Blatter. But I think the larger point is Unless you are running an absolute true dictatorship, uh, you know, a North Korea situation, no one can really afford in this day and age to not pay attention to their reputation, to not pay attention to what the media says about them, to thumb their nose at what the world thinks. You have to communicate constantly what it is you're doing, why what you're doing is the right thing, and you have to answer critics. You have to answer criticism. If you're going to be have a large, powerful organization with tentacles in every country in the world, you can't simply ignore the tough question. Are you corrupt? Are you taking bribes? Why does this guy have a $26 million credit card? To you simply cannot ignore allegations and charges week in, week out, year in, year out for decades without it catching up with you. And it finally it caught up with Sepp Blatter. It caught up with a lot of the folks at, at FIFA. And I'm not a huge soccer fan, folks, but it ap <laughs> certainly appears to be one of the most wildly corrupt organizations in the world. I do want to take just a moment a, a contrarian view. A lot has been made about them granting Qatar the, uh, the world championship and that's not even the word how it's described. That shows my ignorance of soccer. But giving them the top tournament in a few years, and that being denounced because basically nobody in Qatar plays soccer. It's a tiny, tiny nation, and so many people have been killed in the construction of the stadiums there. I do have a, I do have a bias. I've been to Qatar on business several times. Everyone's been nice to me. It doesn't mean I endorse everything that goes on in that country. But I do think, given all the problems in the Middle East, all the tensions, and the cumulative trillions of dollars that have been spent on weapons and arms and bullets and guns and bombs in the Middle East, to see a country like Qatar actually divert billions and billions, perhaps trillions of dollars on things like sports stadiums and TV networks like Al Jazeera, <laughs> On balance, I think that's a good thing. <laughs> and if they're willing to subsidize uh, entertainment for the rest of the world for sports, I think that is on balance a good thing. Completely side issue from <laughs> the corruption going on at FIFA and whether Sepp Blatter made the right decision by stepping down. But uh, the, again, the big media training PR lesson for the day is don't kid yourself into thinking you're running a dictatorship. If you have an organization and you are involved with sponsors, customers, clients, political figures around the world, you have to maintain your reputation at all times, something FIFA lost track of a long time ago. 